Namaste. Today I want to gift you with a wonderful therapeutic series of stretches to help ease in uh, to your low back. So if you notice, we do have a um, four-part series on relieving low back pain. But before you get into these movements, um, it can be really helpful to spend a few days just doing the stretching protocol and then it kind of opens the low back, opens the body, and prepares it for some of the more vigorous exercises that are contained within that four-part series. So let's get started. So we have Christine here lying in a supine position down on her back. First things first, you want to make sure that the spine is nice and long. So if the chin is pointed straight towards the sky, then you know that you're crunching the neck. So drawing the chin slightly towards the chest, keeping that nice long neck as you lie down. That's key here. And keep that in mind as you go through the stretches. So the first thing is we're going to take the knee and bend it in towards the chest. As you do this, be mindful of the straight leg. So notice how her foot is rotated out. She's going to rotate that second toe to point straight towards the sky, flex the foot and press energy through the heel. So you see this straight leg is very strong, very active. This is important. Keep this activation through the entire series. Again, first stretch, we're going to take the knee into the chest. She can interlace her hand or hands around the knee and just enjoy a few breaths relaxing here. So with every inhalation, filling the lungs, and on your exhalations, finding a place that you can relax. So it's almost like a challenge with every breath. On the inhale, you're kind of scanning the body for points of tension. And on the exhale, find something to let go of, something to relax, to release, some way to create space. You're going to stay here at least three full breaths and then move into the second movement, which will be an external rotation. So allow the arm to fall to the side and then allow the knee to fall open towards the side. Now notice how her hip is rooting up. She can take her hand, place it to the hip bone to encourage the hip to stay down. So there's no sense in taking this leg too far to the side. Make sure that that other hip is grounded and rooted. Uh, second toe still pointed towards the sky. Good adjustment, Christine. And we stay here for a few breaths. Next stage. Coming back over, we're going to take this foot towards the thigh. For some of you, you'll be able to touch it. For others, that won't work. So just know that the foot is towards the thigh. And then the knee comes towards the belly button. So you're kind of pulling that knee in towards the belly button. This hip, you want to keep it rooting down. So try not to let the hip lift off the floor. Keep it, so we're not coming into a twist here. You're isolating that stretch, knee towards the belly button. Do you feel that? Yes, you should be feeling it on this inner part of the thigh. A few breaths here, and with that we can take both hands to the inside, grab the ankle from the inside, from the inside, on the top, yep, and then allow the knee to fall forward. So you're drawing the heel, we're not going to let rest it yet, but we're drawing the heel up towards our hip bone and allowing the knee to fall away. After a few breaths of holding it in place, you can take the foot as high up on the hip as it goes, grab only with one hand, and allow the knee to fall towards the floor. Now for many of us, especially with lots of low back pain, odds are you're gonna be more like Christine here, maybe even up further, where the knee is not gonna to come to the floor, and that's okay. What you wanna do is breathe and reach from the low rib all the way through the hip flexor, through the leg, through the knee and just envision it going further and further towards the floor. As it starts to open, you're going to take the foot, flex it, and bring the ankle above the knee. Now what you don't want is your foot to rest on the leg like hers is now. So she wants to move her foot over so that it's totally free of the leg. No contact between the foot and the leg, only ankle to thigh, right? Flexing this foot to protect the knee, she's going to, again, think about lengthening down, opening up through the psoas, through the hip flexors. It's the tightness in the pelvis and the psoas that can lead to tightness in the back. Uh, this series of stretches um, uh, approaches all the muscles that affect the pain in our low back. So after a few breaths here, she can take it to the next level, bending the knee. And coming to a modified figure four, she's going to root this foot down, 
and just reset the body. So sending this uh, right hip away, the knee away, and keeping this foot flexed. After a few breaths here, if it's available, only if it's available, if you're starting to feel tension or pain, you've taken it far enough, but if you want some more, you can lift this foot and come to your full figure four, interlacing the fingers in between the leg, around the thigh, or even around the shin if you want more intensity. And when you do that, you can draw the heel towards the butt. This entire time, she wants to be drawing the knee away from the body, drawing that right hip away from the body, opening up the low back. Finally, after a few breaths here, if you want to do a little rock back and forth, um, side to side, so side to side, that can be helpful to like massaging your sacrum in this hip stretch. And finally, Christine's going to take the outside hand, begin to place it on the hip bone as she grabs the outside of the foot with her inside hand. So coming to a half happy baby, stretching this foot long, this leg long, hand to the top of the hip to keep it rooted down and allowing her knee to fall towards the armpit, towards the floor, flexing through the foot and again using the hand here to lengthen through the leg. Second toe pointed towards the sky, energy out through the heel, taking your final breaths here. Now if this feels good and you're not feeling any strain in the low back, you can extend this from a half happy baby, which is what this is essentially, to a supta gustasana, which would be to straighten the leg. So if this feels good for your back, um, press energy through the heel to start to straighten the leg. Yes. And so go ahead and rest, Christine. And to reset the body before moving to the other side, let's take Apanasana, both knees into the chest, and you can inhale, forehead to the knees, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. And on your exhalation, come back to your supine position, ready to start for the other side. So please um, take this series of stretches. You wanna take at least three full big yogi breaths in each of the stretches to allow for the body to relax and to open. This is something that you should be doing uh, when you wake up in the morning before any other physical practice. So even as you go to start levels one through four of our yoga therapy protocol for relieving low back pain, I would highly suggest that you start with a couple of days of doing the stretching sequence first. And then even as you begin the therapy protocol, always begin uh, with this stretching sequence. It, you're really gonna notice um, the way it opens up and relieves the low back. Um, if you have any questions about these moves, you're welcome to leave comments below and we'll do our best to answer your questions. But just experiment with these moves in your body. I hope it brings you lots of health and mobility in your low back. I know for me, with my injuries, it was a lifesaver. And doing the sequence frequently was extremely helpful. I mentioned to do in the morning and before your exercises, but you can also do this anytime you start to feel fatigue in the low back. So for example, like if I'm flying through the, uh, the airport, or if I'm going to the airport, and maybe I have a layover, and my back's starting to bother me because of all the sitting and lifting and whatnot, I will lay down and take this sequence, and it does wonders for my back. So experiment in your own bodies, and good luck. Namaste.